Well, good afternoon. And firstly, uh, I want to say thank you to the Advertising Association for inviting me to record this message for the AdNet Zero Global Summit. And I'd like to welcome everyone in attendance, wherever in the world you may be. It's only through discussions like you are having today that we're able to harness the immense capability of the private sector to make progress on this hugely important agenda for us all. And I'm grateful for the work you are doing to make that a reality. In order to achieve net zero, we have to work in partnership. And that is a partnership between government, between civil society, between the community as a whole and business. And what government has done in recent weeks, and I hope you have seen much about this, is telegraph its very strong intents, intentions in this area. You may have seen the recent publication of the United Kingdom's net zero strategy, which was last week, which highlights very clearly how the UK is setting a framework to actually get us to net zero by 2050. I'm grateful for the work thinking and the focus that you are all bringing in your industry to how you can assist on this hugely important area for our country and more broadly for the world. And from a partnership perspective, not just on net, the Net Zero strategy published last week, the government was one of the first, part, the first countries in the entire world to set a clear and un ambiguous target on net zero on making progress in this area. And the focus from the UK, which is demonstrated through the strategy, is now about how to turn those ambitions into reality. Last week was a really big step in that regard, but it builds on top of a really good track record that the UK has under all administrations and over a long period of time in trying to tackle carbon emissions. And since 1990, we have significantly reduced the amount of carbon we emit whilst growing the economy by a substantial amount. And I hope it demonstrates a clear commitment from the UK to continue to achieve progress in this regard. And now at this critical point, the UK has an opportunity to become a world leader in low carbon technologies, low carbon services and low carbon systems as it works to achieve net zero. It's estimated, for example, that the UK low carbon economy could grow more than four times faster than the rest of the economy right now, all the way up to 2030. And between 2015 and 2030 could support up to two million jobs. And there's already meat on the bones coming here from the government. Just in the last few weeks, along with net zero, the net zero strategy, we have also made other announcements. So further support for the electrification of UK vehicles and their supply chains as well as further improvements, really important improvements for the infrastructure and the electric charging points that need to go with it all across our country. Secondly, an announcement just a few days ago that we are accelerating two clusters of carbon capture technology, one in the northwest, the high net cluster, and one on the east coast in Teesside and Humber. And that is to try and work through this op the opportunity of carbon capture technology and how we can use it in the future to meet our net zero ambitions. There's been further support for research and development to develop the green technologies and the innovation projects of tomorrow, whether they be decarbonising our homes, our industries, our land or our power. And we've been committed to decarbonising our electricity production still further through looking at the development, for example, of new nuclear projects. And you may have seen in recent months plans to restore 280,000 hectares of peat in England by 2050 and to treble the creation of woodland within England to meet our UK based target of at least 30,000 hectares of woodland per year being planted by the end of this parliament. So there is a lot being done by government, but we know that this journey will only work if we take it hand in hand with the community, with civil society and with business. And that's why I want to congratulate the advertising industry for the effort and the ingenuity it has shown already in rising to the challenges posed by climate change. And I've seen some of those examples already, even in just a short time I have been a minister. The Ad Green Carbon Calculator, which helps companies quantify the impact of their operations on the environment, was launched a few weeks ago. And I understand and congratulations that over 200 organisations have signed up and are using it and registered already. I've seen also the Ad Net Zero Essential Certificate, the actual first of its kind training course for sustainability in advertising. 
And I want to commend the advertising industry and its membership for the ambitious goals and the five-point plan to achieve them that was set out this time last year in AdNet Zero. As I and my predecessor, Andrew Griffiths, are very aware from our experiences championing this agenda elsewhere, this level of engagement and interest from the sector is hugely welcome. So thank you again. And right now, we know that the eyes of the world are on the UK on this agenda, with COP26 having just started and going on for a number of days to come. And we know that COP26 poses both a challenge in getting lots of countries to come together to agree to make progress, but also a real opportunity if we're able to do that. And I look forward to seeing the progress, as I'm sure you do, in the coming days ahead. But for now, thank you. Thank you to everybody in the industry who has made such progress. We know that when businesses and societies need change, the way that that happens is by people standing up and doing the right thing. And I'm grateful for all the work that the industry is doing. Thank you for everything you are talking about and that you have done so far. Please enjoy the summit. Please watch closely COP26. And thank you again. I look forward to seeing some of you in person soon.